nine is for biodiversity with Rachel and Handy. Let's start by presenting the B9 policy. The first read of it can be confusing, but there are a few words that are really important for understanding the policy, and these are the words that we will focus on in these short videos. In this third video, we're going to look at how the policy deals with invasive species. Invasive species are species non-native or alien to the ecosystem under consideration, whose introduction causes or is likely to cause economic harm, environmental harm, or harm to human health. The IDB policy on invasive species is simple. The bank will not support operations that introduce invasive species. But how do we identify an invasive species? There's a global network of experts in invasive species and also some really good free online resources with lots of information about many different types. For example, cabi.org. However, as many species have not been assessed, we don't always know whether they will become a problem or not and you should ask an expert. Don't forget that our policy allows for the use of the precautionary approach. This is very useful for invasive species, as often we don't have good information, but if we think there is a possibility for the species to become invasive, please say so. Invasive species can be useful, for example, as biofuel, trees, shrubs and grasses are all good candidates. In agriculture, by the way, GMOs cannot be used as an IDB project if they are potentially invasive. In aquaculture, two classic examples for Latin America are tilapia and trout, both of which have been rampant predators, eat everything else in the lake or river they are put in. In forestry, pine and eucalyptus for reforestation can cause real problems with the water table, as well as increase the likelihood of fire. In restoration plantings and slope stabilization, often actions that are part of project mitigation measures, as ornamentals in urban parks and gardens, and in the pet trade. An example of this is the lionfish, a species from Asia that escaped from Aquaria during a hurricane that hit the USA. In 10 years, it has spread over most of the Caribbean and is busily eating its way through the diversity that exists in coral reefs in the whole of the region. History could be repeated through a project to strengthen the ornamental fish exports from Jamaica. We need to be sure that it isn't. Invasive species can also be introduced accidentally by many activities such as the movement of soil and dirty machinery transferring seeds, infected fruit dispersing new pests and diseases, think of the Mediterranean fruit fly that devastates citrus production, or the coffee rust that has devastated Central American coffee production, through opening corridors such as routes for transmission lines through intact vegetation. The route is not only good for the transmission line, but weedy species can also colonize the open pathway. A really big impact on marine systems comes from ballast water, when, after unloading, cargo boats take up water from one ocean to give them some stability, and when they arrive at another port in another ocean, they disperse the water before taking on their new load. This is a really effective way of marine species moving from one side of the world to the other and has already caused big problems in many areas. The bank will not support operations that introduce invasive species. To make sure that projects comply with this policy, we should do the following. Check the scientific names of introductions and determine if they might be invasive. Look for alternatives, there are always some. Even if the species is already there, we cannot introduce more of it without a management plan to prevent its escape. Prevent accidental introduction of invasive species through improved management, early detection and control, especially in critical natural habitat and other sensitive environments comply with international ballast water legislation and any other national legislation that controls the use of invasives. Islands are particularly vulnerable to invasive species. Biodiversity and environmental issues are sometimes not adequately considered in projects in Haiti because of the high level of degradation the island has already experienced. However, Haiti is a biodiversity hotspot with a suite of endemic species and has suffered not only from forest clearance and destruction of coral reefs, but also from the introduction of invasive species. The Kai Jeremy Road Rehabilitation Project in the southwest of the country is a 50 kilometer road linking two towns that passes through the buffer zone of a national park in southwest Haiti. This mountainous area is home to many endemic frogs and some rare mammal species too. Slope stabilization using plants has been a major part of the project mitigation and restoration. Initially, the contractor chose exotic invasive species for this, even though the contract specified native species and the project takes place in critical natural habitat. This would have meant that while trying to mitigate environmental damage and restore habitats, more impact would have been created. Neither the contracting firm, the project staff, 
the government supervisors or the supervision firm understood the concept of native species, believing that exotic species, as they were already present in Haiti, were therefore native. Once the concept was understood, the contractor realized the importance of their role and established native plant nurseries for this and other projects around Haiti. Establishing native plant nurseries in advance of construction operations will ensure their availability when the time comes to restore natural habitats. Another example from the same island nation comes from a project to establish a sisal plantation in an area of extreme poverty within the newly established Trois Bay National Park. The area to be planted was in an already degraded area that had previously been managed for sisal, but that had since become overgrown with an invasive exotic acacia species, which threatened the park's native flora and fauna. The team following the project decided that a well-managed sisal plantation in what is an already severely degraded area and that eliminated the exotic invasive plants and established a nursery to propagate five IUCN red-listed plant species for transplanting into the park's restoration zone would be a win-win for biodiversity and for local people. The third case from Haiti relates to a biofuel project to help provide alternative energy sources in a country where forested areas have been cleared to provide charcoal and firewood for domestic cooking. Initially, three fast-growing acacia species were chosen, all three of which are highly invasive species, including Lucana. The fact that they are already present in Haiti doesn't alter the need to comply with B9. This issue was noted at the project development stage, providing time and scope to remove the species from the project and add a research component to identify non-invasive alternatives as biofuels. One of the biggest problems in many places is the lack of knowledge of which plants are native and which are not. In order to showcase the incredible diversity of natives suitable as ornamentals and for other uses in Haiti, the gardens of the IDB office there have been transformed into a native species garden, serving both an aesthetic and an educational purpose for staff and visitors. 